you guys i woke up this morning to the most gorgeous view it is literally snowing outside and i haven't seen snow this winter at all it's so ridiculous where i live because literally last month in february i was going on a run outside in shorts and a tank top and now it's march and it's snowing make that make sense it really doesn't but it's so beautiful out camper and i went on a walk this morning and I don't know it just felt so magical <laughs> and i just let him like have free range in the snow because he goes wild and this woman walking by was like he is made for the snow i definitely need to take him on a trip somewhere to like a lake and snow before it gets too warm he's staring at me right now anyways good morning you guys welcome to a couple days in my life as a registered nurse in the emergency department i work the next four shifts in a row and I work in mid shift so I work from 11 to 11 30 and in fact this will be the last set of mid shifts I work because after this stretch of shifts I will be officially switching over to day shift which I am really really thrilled about I I think it's going to be really good for my health mentally physically to get in a better rhythm and have just a more consistent schedule plus one thing that is really nice about my day shift pattern that i'll be working is i work three on three off three on five off whereas right now i'm working kind of a different pattern um i work a four shifts on six days off which is pretty amazing if i do say so myself but then i work two days on two days off and the four days on that you're working those are those are long long days basically you not having much or really any time for yourself outside of working and showering and exercising and sleeping and eating and you know all the basic needs in life i'm really excited to switch to the three shifts i think three is perfect and in the future if i want to pick up and work more i always have that option anyways it is time to head to work i've already packed my work bag packed my lunch have my coffee to go what else do i need to do all i need to do is put my shoes on and then we're gonna head out i'm also gonna throw on a jacket because it's snowing outside i need to put this on and then i need to actually get a snow jacket it's kind of hard to live in a different town than you work in because the weather can be one way here and then when i get to work i'm like what is this it could either be super sunny when it was raining here or pouring rain when it was sunny here and then i'm not prepared so i usually tend to try to leave a like a rain jacket or something in my car in case i get in a pickle like that um yeah so it's time to head to work i'm excited to bring you guys along i got a lot of sleep last night and it's gonna be a good stretch of four shifts and we have a ton of time off so i'm really excited i'm looking forward to that I am home from work, hopped in the shower, put on some PJs, comfy clothes, wrote in my journal. I don't really know what I'm calling it. Um, I started this about a week and a half ago, so it's new, but I've just been trying to write a little bit at night. Every night, it literally takes three to five minutes, just kind of a recap of my day, what I did to be healthy for the day how my day was how i'm feeling just a page or two and it actually helps me sleep like it helps me go to bed with a clearer mind and i think i'm going to really try to implement it as like a habit for the foreseeable future um anyways i've been doing that and i really like it but 
Today was such a good day at work, you guys. Also, got a little snack here. We got some soft bake cookies. Just a little mini packet. But I want to go over my day today and then I'm going to head to bed and we are going to head to shift two out of four. I just started yapping and Camper woke up and I think he's mad at me. He is a tired boy right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> he's literally glaring at me. Mm. So good. Deserved. Mm. Anyways. Today was really good. It was, quite honestly, probably one of the most mellow days I have ever, ever had in the hospital. I did not have more than two patients at any point in time. Do you realize how insane that is? I didn't have more than two patients. None of my patients got admitted. All of my patients discharged. Can we just take a moment for appreciation of that for healthy people not having to stay in the hospital? Like, that is just absolutely amazing. So, none of my patients got admitted. Um, it was just a really, it was a weird day. It just went by so quickly and everybody around me was saying like, wow, the day is flying by. It was like we were in like a time warp. I don't know, it was so odd, but... I did have like, I wouldn't say a little hiccup, but a moment of, uh, oh my goodness. Um, anytime we get a pediatric patient, a kiddo that just doesn't look great, I don't want to say the L word, lethargic, because we definitely don't throw that word around. Like that word is taken very seriously in the ER. Um... But I mean like on the cusp of that when you like take a kiddo's blood pressure and they're not even reacting to the cuff squeezing their arm or their leg That's when you know mm, What's what's going on here? So I did have a kiddo that I was wondering mm, what's going on here and We try to refrain from having to start IVs on kids, you know, unless absolutely necessary because it's just sort of a traumatic experience for them. When we do go down that route, we do all the things. So we do all the labs, we get blood cultures, we try to minimize, you know, having to poke a child with a needle. So that route did happen. We did go down that route. And guess what? Like I said earlier, all is well because all of my patients got discharged including that kiddo. I feel thankful and gratitude towards my patients all being able to go home and sleep in their own bed and not on our ER gurneys because those things are not comfortable. In fact, I think I discharged my last patient when I had an hour and a half left of my shift. And so, <laughs> I just tag teamed with my coworker, which if you know, that's like, the best is when you just get to go do a bunch of things with a coworker and have company. So yeah, that's what we did. We settled an ambulance, did a straight cath, um, helped her with an IV, helped her discharge a patient, and then the day flew by and here we are, we're home and yeah, it was a really, really great day. One of like the better days I've had in a long time although i will say there was something i am disappointed with so when you become a nurse there are a ton of different certifications you can get specifically on the specialty that you work in there are certifications for icu for labor and delivery for med surge for a ton of other things um and for the emergency department we have a certification called the cen so the certified emergency nurse as far as i understand it is a board certified nursing exam so semi similar to like taking the nclex like you have to do all of these things before you can actually sign up and take the exam you have to provide your license number all of that and some facilities and hospitals will reimburse you for taking it and getting certified in it. Some will offer a raise 
Right now where I work, they are not reimbursing you for the exam, which costs money, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but you do get a 3% pay increase, I believe. Naturally, I had some downtime today and I was just thinking, you know what? I'm just going to schedule a date. Pick a date a couple months out. That way I have something set in stone and I have to force myself to start studying for it. Also, I kind of want to study again and study for something like that because I genuinely feel like I could use a little refresher and, and brush up on things that I don't really see too often. So I'm going through the whole process of signing up, finding my license number, doing all of that, and then I go to schedule a date and then it tells me how much it is. Y'all, it is $380 to take this exam. It, I, I, I don't know, it could, it could be more than that because I exited out of that page after I saw that price. So there's probably fees and all this or that. It's like, that was literally more than taking my NCLEX. This certification costs more than my RN license. What the, who pay, like, that's ridiculous. It's basically $400 to go take this exam. I, like, how do people afford this shit? Like, why does everything in life cost so much money? It's just ridiculous. And so, like I mentioned earlier, I will, if I pass it, I'll get a raise and it'll be like a 3% increase. And so I'm like trying to do the math to figure out, okay, if I pay for this exam, since where I work doesn't reimburse it, they used to, now they don't, which sucks. I was trying to do the math of how long I would have to work for me to actually make that money back. And it, it's like well over a month of work to actually see that profit back on my paycheck. Granted, then it's going to be taxed. So I'm going to calm down. It's really not that deep. It's not that big of a deal, but it's just like kind of crazy to me that it's basically $400. That's a lot of money. And then that doesn't include like the study material. One of the most recommended study books is at least $50. Um, there's like apps you can get with practice questions. Those cost money. It's just discouraging regardless after all that said and done i think i'm still gonna sign up and take it because ultimately it'll be worth it in the long run to have that pay raise i actually want to like force myself to have to start learning and, and studying more um because i feel like i've sort of reached like a little bit of a i don't want to say wall or halt but i'm just like pretty used to seeing the things that i see and then we have those moments where we have something really critical or serious come in and I'm like a little out of my element. So I, I actually kind of want to study and, and learn some new things. I'll probably set a goal to take it by, what is it right now? It's the beginning of March. So take it by April, May, by the end of May, have it done, have it out of the way before summer starts. So if any of you guys have taken the CEN um, and have any resources that you recommend or anything like that, just please comment them down below and let me know. I already have a list of things, but the more the merrier. So that's my little rant for the night. <laughs> I'm gonna finish eating my cookies and then um, brush my teeth, go to bed, and I will see you guys in the morning.
morning guys i just got to work we are heading into shift two out of four sometimes if i get here a little bit early i like to play a song or two that brings me joy and peace um just so i can mentally prepare myself for walking into the hospital because you never know what the day is going to bring you and you never know what you're going to walk into here's to manifesting another good wonderful day filled with healthy patients teamwork all of the things um i'm gonna grab all my stuff from my little nursing bag over here and then we will head into work because i already listened to my song so i've got my badge reel here and honestly one of the best things i have ever done was attach a pen and a sharpie honestly to my badge reel because i use them all the time also second favorite item are these trauma shears they fold up in your pocket and <laughs> i'm like don't know what i'm doing right now um they fold up like a little pocket knife right there um in your pocket i got these on amazon and they're similar to the leatherman raptors that are very popular in the er but those are a hundred dollars and these are i don't remember how much but incredibly cheaper on amazon so i will link them down below if you guys are interested because i use those every single day not just me other people too so very very handy um and then i have my stethoscope in here i'll probably just leave that in here because it's kind of drizzling outside and i don't want it to get wet so put that back in here uh it's time time to head in so i will see you guys inside um it's sunday usually sundays are mellow <laughs> probably shouldn't have said that out loud but the parking lot isn't full and it, we're just gonna see what the day brings us probably just gonna end up in a ponytail so we're just we're just gonna go with it whatever um i need to finish getting ready for work and then we're gonna head out i realized i did not talk to you guys much yesterday well i didn't talk to you after i got off of work and so i want to fill you in on kind of how my day was um i had an interesting day because Working in healthcare, you are, you know, a mandatory reporter uh, for the things that you have to see or be a part of, and it's really hard. That's exactly why I could never, ever, ever work in the NICU or in pediatrics or labor and delivery. I, like, I just cannot handle sad cases with children it's so heartbreaking and so my heart goes out to all of you that work in healthcare that care for young children pediatrics up to any age I, it's just the things that you have to see and be a part of there they can be so so heartbreaking um but you know on the flip side you can make such an impact and do so many great things so i'm not trying to diminish that but it was interesting because um, I had a situation at work where I had to call Child Protective Services. It was actually this whole ordeal. Um, it took up a lot of time. I got my charge nurse involved. We had to get security involved. It becomes this whole situation of what you are and aren't allowed to share and discuss because of HIPAA, you know, patients' privacy that they deserve. And... It was just sad. I haven't had to call Child Protective Services a lot as a nurse. I think I've called them maybe two times prior to this. Um, and it's been a while since I called them and they ask you all these questions and you're also supposed to tell the patient that you're calling them. And I don't know, it just felt 
found training and kind of icky and sad and kind of scary because you do what you can you do your due diligence and you reach out to a source like child protective services that can you know go further from there and do what they need to do to um assess the case and you know make sure that the child is safe and protective and uh, getting all of their needs that they need as a child they have a roof over their head their food they're not being abused all those things and we only get to call them and then after that it's like that's that's all that's all that happens typically i think they like to follow up with the person that reports it whether that be through email or they call i've never had that happen <laughs> i'm not you know saying that in a bad way but i've never heard a follow-up from them um but i hope i hope this case is different <laughs> I think it probably will be so anyways that happened yesterday that was kind of the big thing that happened in my day and it was towards the end of my shift so other than that mediocre day it went by semi quickly and now we're heading into shift three out of four I feel like this is like gonna be the hardest one <laughs> just because it's still in the middle of my work week like I still have work tomorrow but I know we're gonna get through today once we get through it it's our Friday so much to look forward to so that's a little update I need to go put a sweater on I think I'm honestly just gonna wear this white shirt put on like a gray sweater some scrub pants and call it good because I never take off my sweater at work it's always freezing and I am running around I am not sitting and I am always still so so cold they really need to do something about that. Um, not just for my sake, but for the patient's sake. The patients are always cold. I'm bringing them in like three, four warm blankets per hour. Okay, not everybody, but you get what I'm saying. It's freezing. Anyways, gonna head to work. Gonna have ourselves a good day. It's pouring outside. Wasn't expecting that, but we just made it. We made it through our third shift, which was objectively the hardest in the four day stretch because you're like, oh my gosh, I'm only halfway through and I still have to get through today. But then tomorrow is my Friday and I have a big chunk of time off. So I'm really looking forward to that. Today was a good shift. It's it started a little bit rough and we we made it through got a little bit better we have a really good night shift crew working right now so everybody is always so wonderful about helping each other out we had a patient whose vitals started suddenly changing oxygen started dropping and within less than two minutes we had a doctor a respiratory therapist techs RNs all at the bedside you know helping this patient so I just I love seeing that because I just I don't love seeing that for the patient's sake I'm sorry but I love seeing how we can all come together as a team and how we all are reliant on each other to do our jobs we all need each other we're all co-workers it comes full circle and I just love being a part of a team I love those moments where I get to look around the room and just feel grateful for where I'm at and what I'm doing yeah today started weird for me it was rough because I was just so tired I couldn't get awake for the first several hours probably by 2 p.m. I felt good um, but the first couple hours were rough for me um, I was breaker today so we try to have two nurses during the day 
be breakers if possible. Sometimes we can get pulled from breaking if we have a super critical patient come in and all of the other nurses are busy with other patients, they have a full load, um, or you know, if we're understaffed, or if the ER is just chaotic, which sometimes it's just so chaotic because there's so many things going on at once. So I got pulled for probably 45 minutes and then I gave that patient away, went back to breaking. We always try to get a 30 minute lunch and then we're supposed to also get three 15 minute breaks. Um, two before the lunch, no, one before the lunch and then two after the lunch. That doesn't always happen but that is the goal and for that I'm very grateful for because breaks are so necessary and if you work in a hospital or an environment where those aren't mandatory or not easily accessible I I am sorry I wish I could help you I wish there's more I could do because I can't imagine not being able to just step away for 15 20 30 minutes and just have a moment to myself like I don't actually think I could do this job if I didn't get those necessary breaks or I just wouldn't be the best nurse I could be because everybody needs that time to themselves when you're at a hospital for 12 plus hours so yeah that was today um started a little bit rocky got slowly better ended on a high note and we're gonna head home I'm so excited to get camper and cuddle with him I love sleeping and listening to the rain and it's also our Friday tomorrow so so many things to look forward to yeah I am going to head home now and I will chat with you guys in the morning Good morning, you guys. It is our Friday. Hallelujah. We made it. Camper's over there staring at me like, wow, lady, you've abandoned me for literally going on four days in a row. And for that, I'm sorry, but we're gonna have a lot of time together once this shift is over. So I'm in a good mood. It's gonna be a good day. Got a good amount of sleep. I just finished packing my lunch, which is more like a snack box. Um, in the past couple days I did meal prep prior to going into my four shifts, but I finished all that food. One thing that I've really been liking is like little burrito bowls with like turkey meat, um, beans, rice, salsa, avocado, cheese, sour cream, whatever you want. I feel like it's super filling, high in protein, and just super tasty. So I've had that for the past three days. And then I've been really into overnight oats, which actually, you guys, the reason we didn't make any today is because I thought I was out and then I just remembered I just got a package. So we're not out of them. I wanna show you guys the brand that I really like. I got these on a whim and I am really happy that I did. This is the brand. I'll have it linked down below if you guys are interested, but I found them on Amazon. So, so tasty and filling i add some almond milk whatever fruit you like you can add sweetener but i actually don't need sweetener with this like i initially thought i would it's very tasty but anyways we don't have time to make those every time i make those i tend to make a mess so we've got our lunch box here i'm going to show you guys what i'm packing and then we are going to head out i got this little meat and cheese plate i'll probably have this for like my official lunch um Got a little Greek yogurt here. These are my always go-to snacks. So a turkey chompstick and this RX bar. And I just buy these in bulk at Trader Joe's. <laughs> and then we got a little goldfish here. An Olipop if I'm wanting something sweet. And a Celsius if I need it. But I don't think I will because I feel pretty energized. It's my Friday. So that's what I am packing for my lunch today. And then, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good day, you guys. It is time to head out now, so I will see you guys at work. I am home with Camper, who is currently snoring. <laughs> okay, you heard me say his name, so he woke up, but. It's definitely, yeah, it's definitely past his bedtime. He, 
I'm sure it goes to sleep when my parents go to sleep and they go to sleep relatively early so he's a sleepy boy I'm so happy to be back with him thinking that we'll maybe like go to the coast or go to the snow do some sort of like day trip outside <laughs> sorry but he's just so cute anyways I am off work and I wanted to fill you guys in on my last shift and end the vlog because we did it we did four out of four shifts um but first drink a drink i'm gonna have a root beer olipop in a wine glass because everything tastes better out of a wine glass and that is just the truth anyways today was actually a really good day because I had a lot of learning opportunities. Initially, when I got to work, we were fully staffed and not busy, um, especially for it being in the middle of the day when I got there. So I started off my day as being like a resource. I was helping the breakers break lunches for day shift and just kind of like bopping around. Actually, back up, back up. <laughs> my day started with a bang. Within 30 minutes of being there, I, yeah, I was in the middle of breaking somebody for lunch, so I was watching their three patients, did a couple things, and they didn't need anything, and another nurse came up to me and asked me if I could help her with an IV start, and I was like, oh yeah, absolutely, like, I don't really have a lot going on, so I go into this room, and the room is, like, tucked away in the corner, it's one of our corner ER rooms, and I've, like, had... <laughs> bad experiences in this room where I've had really sick patients and I, I don't know I don't know why it's been notoriously in this room anyways didn't think much of it go in there trying to look at this patient's arm trying to start an IV um, and then all of a sudden this patient starts having a seizure I call for help and then immediately get another nurse in the room, the providers at the bedside. Actually, there was two nurses, there was three nurses, including myself. There was three of us and the provider. We did everything that you need to do when you're with somebody that is having a seizure. You wanna turn them to their side, you wanna make sure you have suction on at the bedside, you wanna maybe put some oxygen on them, make sure the SpO2 monitor is reading appropriately and like they're on the cardiac monitor you want iv access so you can give them medication you know um we gave out of in that circumstance but it was just like a lot <laughs> it was a lot at once and i was like wow well if i wasn't awake i am now and so i probably spent 30 ish minutes in there helping with that patient we put seizure pads on the bed we then have to like go back in the chart and document you know everything that happened so it is time consuming and it's scary and frightening when people have a seizure especially if you're having a conversation with them beforehand like it's really weird to be talking to somebody and then them just all of a sudden have a seizure on you i've only experienced it twice that being the second time and it's scary so Anyways, that was within, you know, the first hour of me being there. Um, luckily, I was in the room when it happened, so we could get the help and get get things done that needed to be done quicker. After that, I actually got pulled to triage, which if you guys have been watching my videos, you would know that I recently got trained to be out in triage in our ER. So to be a triage nurse where I work, you have to have at least a year of ER experience you have to take the specific course and then you have to spend a certain amount of hours uh, with another nurse as they kind of like precept you and go through all the things with you. I've already done all of that. I've even worked a six hour triage shift by myself. And because it was so slow, my charge nurse was like, why don't you go out to triage with this other nurse you will be the main triage nurse, but then you have this nurse for backup if you need anything. So this nurse became a resource nurse. They were rooming patients and helping in our fast track area with EKGs, all the things. But then if I needed anything, I had somebody 
very accessible. Help me with any questions or confusion about orders to put in or anything like that. Plus, I will say we do have a fast track provider that we can always go to if we need help. And we have a fast track nurse and we have an ER tech in the lobby with us who is there to help us take vital signs. So we have lots of resources. We're never alone. And so that was like nice because it kind of took off the pressure of, okay, I, here it is. I'm like the gatekeeper to the ER because I knew I had this other nurse I could just go to in an instant. Um, and so I did that for a couple of hours and then we got busy and then the other nurse that I was able to go to got pulled to take patients. So I just finished off the rest of my shift triaging. So I think I was in triage for nine eight or nine hours and it was it was really good because it stayed steady and it was kind of like the perfect trickle of patients coming in because I was consistently triaging people and it wasn't too busy where I was getting overwhelmed and it was a lot of different things and I just feel like it was it was kind of like the perfect day for me to do that because I'm still getting comfortable with that and god knows how long that's going to take because i feel like you become a better triage nurse when you've had more er nurse experience because you know what to look for you've you've just seen more it's just all about time um so yeah that was good that's how i ended my day overall it was a good way to end my four shifts and now we have a chunk of time off that i am very grateful for and excited for that's what's so great about nursing is not working five days a week i don't know if i could ever go back to that i just can't imagine doing that <laughs> granted 12 and a half hour days are extremely long but i am just very appreciative of having a good amount of time off and being able to relax and spend time with my friends my family spend time outside in nature spend time with camper thank you guys for hanging out with me for this work week and i hope you all are doing amazing happy almost spring and i will see you guys in my next video